What's going on everybody? Joshua Wade here and today as you can see it's a little bit different. My mug is in one of the somewhere around here um, and you can see Logic Pro is already open and today I want to talk to you a little bit about Logic Pro's uh, drummer feature and there are a few videos about it but this is the such an underlooked, underrated writing instrument if anything and no point on the instrument thing this just this has gotten me out of many a dry spells and without talking too much here is uh, acoustic vamp 17 this is just a stock logic loop that i got a little acoustic thing i'll go ahead and play this for you Okay, so, you know, just kind of a basic little acoustic noodle thing. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to hit this plus up here and we're going to add drummer. And what's really cool is you can select the style. So this to me is honestly, this would be more like a, a songwriter. I guess that's just a matter of opinion of what style this acoustic loop. It could go any way, right? So we'll, we'll just select songwriter and we'll click create. Okay, so you can see it's got this right here, it brings up the Bluebird and the Hotel Cafe. So if we click this right here, if you keep this open, you can actually change drummers, you can change drum sets. Like say if you find a style of drummer that you like, you can keep the drummer and you can actually put him on, him or her on a different drum set. So it's really cool. Um, the problem that I have with drummer is apple doesn't make it super easy inside of logic pro to really see the features and how you can take advantage of them so i want to show you a couple things here the very first thing that i always do is you've got this little follow box right here so i'm going to click that and you'll see if i had more tracks it would let me it would show me a whole list of tracks here and i could select which one i wanted the drum style to focus on so because it's just a simple tutorial and i want to keep it short but uh, you know knowledgeable um, Acoustic Vamp 17 is the one, so I'm going to have it select that. And what's really cool is if I grab this and I stretch it out, you'll see it change. So let's say this is, so this is this long, right? So what we got four, eight, so this is 16, right? So if I shorten this to let's say, we'll cut it down to, we'll make it, there we go, we'll make it eight, right? This will change if you see the little the little bumps and stuff the little transients those are actually changing according to how long or short like if I want to come into a part that's a fill right here you see it added a little fill let me go ahead and play it and just see what it has towards the end here so far I'm shooting from the hip on this one guys so this is all not scripted <laughs> it'll add a little fill okay the reason that it does that like if I were to shorten this it's going to change up on me. Well, it didn't change because it knows that I wanted to put a fill on that section. So my advice is kind of set it up. Like if you're just working, like let's just say that this part is a verse part. I just want a verse part. So set it up. And then if you notice, I go to the right, add plus. So this is where it gets a little bit frustrating it can be if you're not familiar with this whenever i have something highlighted and this is how logic pro works with everything whenever i have it highlighted that's the section that i'm changing down here and now let's hop into how we can change it so i'm trying to do this in a little bit of an order um, similar to the way that i write the drum parts when i use drummer so let's say here's the first part right let's go back to the beginning Okay, kind of a chill beat, but let's say I wanted something a little quieter and a little more simple. You'll see the transients change. But notice they only changed on this one because, again, you're only affecting the one that you click on. So if I go back to this one, you'll see it the, the uh, little blob, the little dot, change back up to here because that's where the settings are on that one. And this is the part that can get confusing. So what I do when I write personally with Drummer, I will make my sections accordingly. Like if this is an intro, this will be my intro. If this is a verse or a chorus after that, I'll add a chorus after that if I want to add a chorus there. And what I'll do is I'll rename them as I change them. So I'll go into, where is it, name and color, and I'll just rename this like we'll say it's an intro. Again, this is me shooting from the hip. I didn't write any of this. I, as you see it is as I'm doing it. So, so we'll say this is an intro, right? So I want the intro to be a little softer and like it is right now. So we'll make sure we're back at the beginning. Let me turn it up a little bit. And I can see already right here, there's a fill that's gonna come in. 
Okay, so let's say I wanted the intro to just be this, right? So let's shorten this. And if you'll notice, I'm not duplicating it. I'm not, you know, grabbing this and duplicating exactly what it is because that will duplicate exactly what you've decided to put right here. But this, when you stretch this, it'll change it a little bit. You see it added a little fill right there? So if I play that now... See, so it's it's pretty cool once you get the hang of it. It can be a little frustrating, I'm not gonna lie. If you're watching this and you're already mad at Drummer, trust me, I can relate. I can completely understand because I wanted to throw my laptop across the room a couple of times until I understood how the workflow goes. And now I love it. And this thing is great for just writing parts. So we're on the intro, right? So I'll grab this right here. And again, this is exactly how I write. So I'll rename this and I'll just say verse. So this would be like verse one. So we've got the intro. Let me go ahead and play it. Looks like there's a little fill right here, maybe. And what's really cool about it, other than a lot of things, what's really cool is if I like that hi-hat, I can change it up, I can turn it off, I can add toms. So you see how I add this and you see the transients change. And I can change the type of toms I want, I can have how many, if I increase the fills, you'll see it change um, towards the end, you see how it changed right there. So it just depends on what vibe you're going for. And that's why this is such a powerful tool for writing. If you're having, you know, just a, a brain fart and you can't think of anything, this really has changed the way that I approach things. Because I've got the toms in there now. That strikes me more as like, as like a bridge or a breakdown or pre-course or something. So we'll just turn the toms off. We'll leave the hi-hat on. And because I've got the fills, it added that symbol in the beginning. So because it's an intro, let's crank the fills down a scooch. There we go. Now it's got a little outro here. For the record, you can take all of this and you can transfer it to a MIDI region or um, what do they call it? The, uh, the sequence region. You can transfer all this stuff to that. See, we're already on our way, guys. It's already sounding pretty cool to me. If you're into this, you know, the style of music, this is kind of like a Americana kind of stuff. So getting to the drummers in the different styles, again, I want to try to keep this kind of short, but to the point, um, getting to the styles, you can change the style and the drummer without changing the drum kit and also vice versa. If you like, say, if you find a, a drummer over here and the style that you like, you can select that drummer. And you can actually pick down here, you can pick different drum sets. So let's say under producer kits, because I want it to have multiple outs. I'm a, kind of a fan of the SoCal, the SoCal producer kit. So now that kit is linked with this drummer and this hasn't changed at all because you have to remember the drummer is your style and your drum kit is your sound. So now if I play it back, it's going to be a little bit different. See how the tones are different? The kick already sounds different. See, that kick has got more of a presence to it, and I, I always like that kick. That's kind of my default kick. Um, but now over here on the beat presets, so this is the Hotel Cafe, and again, if you select this, it's going to change the style, okay? So your beat presets. Hotel Cafe was a little bit different, but the possibilities, again, are endless with this because if you, if you click clockwise, right? Let's go back and listen to this one. And again, it's still following my, my kick and snare. is still following my Acoustic Vamp 17. So let's drag, and we can do this in real time. So maybe a little more simple. See, so it added because you notice I changed it to clockwise, the fills went up a little bit. And another thing that you want to keep an eye on, if, if you're ever writing something with this and you hear stuff that you maybe don't see right here in the drums, click the details button and you'll see more stuff. Sometimes you'll see more percussion down here. This happens with a lot of the electronic, like the, um, the 808s and stuff like that. 
whenever you click that details, you'll see other percussion in this section sometimes. So always keep an eye on, on that. If you're hearing something that you, you don't know where it's coming from, it's probably under your details. So now what's really nifty is the <laughs> nifty. I said nifty anyway, so I can add more. I can add a shaker to this intro. And again, you see, I'm only affecting what I have highlighted. So if I click this over here, you see everything change. It went back to Hotel Cafe. I could put it on clockwise if I want to, but I don't want to. So we'll go to this, but it's keeping the same drum set. You notice the SoCal didn't change, even when I clicked over here. So this is like, again, this is such a powerful tool for uh, just get the creative juices flowing. I love this. Um, I discovered this. I used to use Easy Drummer, uh, Tune Tracks Easy Drummer, which is still an amazing virtual instrument. But when I discovered this, it just kind of opened my mind to a different style of writing because I've used Tune Tracks Easy Drummer for years. And again, great plugin, a uh, great virtual instrument, but this just kind of changed it for me. So I added the shaker. Let me see what that sounds like. It looks a little busy to me, but. Oh no, that sounds pretty cool, huh? It's got a ride going in a little shaker. seeing I'm already creating a song and you guys saw me at the beginning of this I promise you none of this was pre-scripted except for the acoustic vamp 17 was the only thing I had going into this so I do like that and let me make sure under my details so your ghost notes you can make it dry you can change the swing of it um, let me solo this real quick and see so what I'm thinking on this one right like if, if I'm approaching this from a producer's point of view I think I maybe want to add some more fills because I want the going into what would be the first verse. I want a few more fills. See, now that's what I like. Okay. Okay, so now we've got, let's try that, I'll put it about halfway. See, it's that easy, guys. It really is that easy. And again, you can change the style of drums. Let's say we want to change the style completely. Let's do like a like a more of an 808 kind of... All right, let's go into hip hop. So we'll pick Dez, right? And you see it changed instantly and the drum machine changed. So keep that in mind when you change drummers. Again, if you find a drummer that you like, save him and then come down here and you can change this to any drum that you want because it is a hip hop and uh, this is Dez. I actually do like starting out with this guy for a lot of my, uh, my hip hop and R&B stuff that I kind of co-produce. But let's hear, I'm not even going to change anything. Let's hear what it does because it's on the loud preset and it's kind of over here so it might be a little bit busy. <laughs> it's still cool. Okay, so the hi hats sound busy. I mean, the whole thing is busy, right, guys? So just just bear with me on this one. We're just we're just rolling with it. We're gonna roll with it. So I want to try a different hi hat, maybe a more of a relaxed. There we go. There we go. Now for some reason this one's the open hi hat or a crash. I don't know what that is. Does it tell me? And this is the most of the time closed hi-hat. I don't know why that is, but it, that, it is what it is. So now that that one's off, I can maybe change this up so my closed hi-hat will be a little more busy. That's pretty cool. And now listen to the next drum part. <laughs> Interesting. So that's, again, guys, the creative possibilities are endless with this thing. So if you haven't tried Logic's drummer yet, try it. You are doing yourself a disservice by not at least experimenting with it a little bit. Um, I'm not going to tell you it's the best virtual instrument for drums in the world because there's a lot of them out there that I hear are really good. I've just not had any experience with. But again, you know, I'm a, a guy coming from... Uh, Easy Drummer, Tune Tracks Easy Drummer, and I've used it for years. I've used it since Easy Drummer 1, the the end part of Easy Drummer 1. Like, I bought the upgrade to Easy Drummer 2. So I have been using it for a long time. And when I first switched over to Logic Pro back in December of 2021, this really kind of blew me away when I really, when I got past the point of frustration and just being angry at it for not understanding how the user interface works and how all this stuff works. Once I got past all that and figured out the potential of this thing, it's really cool. If anything, again, it gives me ideas. I might not use the drums that it, it provides, but it gives me ideas that maybe I never would have thought of. And with this little thing right here, you can just drag it all over the place. So simple and we'll make it kind of soft on the intro, right? <laughs> 
Okay, so not loud, but let's go a little more complex. So if you notice, I didn't go up with it. I went over here with it. Let's see what that does. All right, let's turn off the clap real quick. See, that's got a vibe, right? See, I think that's so cool. Not necessarily that beat with that with that guitar riff, but the idea behind this and just writing parts, I think it's so cool. And if you guys have any questions about Drummer or if you want me to make them more in-depth, this is just barely skimming the surface of what you can do with this thing. I didn't want to make this a 20-minute video. But if you guys want like a part two of this, Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to make a more in-depth, longer video if you guys enjoyed this or if you got anything out of this. Um, continued support is greatly appreciated. Of course, hit that subscribe button or just give me a thumbs up on the like. You don't even have to just subscribe to me. Just hit the like for the YouTube algorithm. And yeah, remember guys, it's called Music Theory, not Music Fact. And I will catch you in the next one. See ya.